right, what's going on, family? Welcome. Get my screen looking right. Welcome to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show right here live. My face is a little ashy as usual. Right here live on Ustream. Glad to have everybody tuning in. God damn. My face is ashy as shit, man. All right, but we're here. Let me see who's in the room. Let me see who's all up in the room, family. We're in the room heavy as of now. People are coming on in the room. Let me get the phone lines and all that stuff ready. And it's a beautiful Easter Sunday evening out here in Los Angeles. That's where I am right now. Me and the family, we're in Vegas this week. We, we got our little Vegas in before the weekend because it gets real packed out there on the weekend and all that good stuff. Had a good time out there. Lost a, lost a few dollars. Nothing major. But it was good kicking it with the family in Vegas. Trying to get the Skype, got my Skype running and everything. And don't forget, family, you need to be going to HiddenColorsFilm.com to check out Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3 if you don't have it. You need to get the official copy, not the bootleg. We're going to start getting specific codes that we're going to have to start spreading around and utilizing as Melanoid people. One of the most important codes is to support progressive black entities such as the Hidden Colors series and the 7 a.m. movie and things of that nature. You're going to have to <clears throat> go out of your way to support because we got just too much bootlegging and that's just some old make up the code as we go along shit. You're going to have to <clears throat> we're going to have to get a code of conduct of supporting things and getting out of the habit of complaining to waste time. We're going to discuss that tonight. There's a lot of complaining to waste time within the black so-called community, which is not a community at all. So I'll say amongst the black population. <clears throat> A lot of stuff we got to talk about, but that's one thing I do want to discuss. We're going to have to really, really get out of the habit of finding things real petty to complain about as a way to not do work. I noticed that with a lot of black people, there's a lot of complaining about stuff. And when you complain and have fake nigga outrage, that keeps you from actually doing something. Like earlier today, and then I'm, I'm, I got a habit now of just blocking. Anytime I see fake outrage on any of my pages, I'm blocking the shit out of people. F I'm going to talk about Fast and Furious too. But fake outrage, that's a way for dusty niggas, fake hotep dudes, jive-ass Negroes, to get out of doing stuff, to sit up and just find little shit to complain about. Fake nigga outrage. If you just whine and look for any little thing to flip and complain, that's going to stop you from actually doing work. Yeah, the black community is a very, it's a, it's a incorrect term because there is no black community. There is no black community. We, we have a black population. Just like today earlier, I wished everybody a happy Easter. It's, it's Easter today. A lot of people went to church. A lot of Christian brothers and sisters out there. I respect everybody's religion. I don't knock anybody. It's a holiday. Happy Easter. Then you got a couple of the fake outrage. Hey, man, why you celebrate Easter? Really? Now, again, a lot of these niggas are trolling. But, again, that, that's some more attention-whoring shit. And then niggas always try to tie hidden colors and everything. How come you did hidden colors and then you promoting Easter? Oh, niggas, goodbye. Block off my page. If that type of fake nigga petty outrage is, is what's getting you in a bunch, get away from me. You're not going to do any work. When, and whenever you hear somebody complaining and whining and fake nigga outraging over little 
any and everything, delete them and get away from them. They're not going to get anything done. Niggas like that are just going to sit around and whenever you try to get some shit done, they're going to look for ways to not do shit. Because I always ask fake nigga outrage people one thing. Show me a link to what you've done. Show me some of your work that you are doing that's progressive. Show me a link and they can't show anything. So a lot of these dudes, man, we got to be very careful of wolves and sheep's clothing who will try to pretend to be conscious and all this old stuff, but they're just really time wasters. They're there to waste your time. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to accomplish anything. They're going to just simply waste your time so that nothing gets done. Y'all can sit on the plantation and just talk and just like in a jail cell. It's that jail mentality. You're just talking to waste time until you die. Let's just sit in this jail cell and talk and waste time, entertain ourselves until we die. Well, it's too many to name. I don't know these niggas' names. It's just so many of them. Some of them are just trolling. Some of them are real fake hotel people. But, you know, again, you just whenever you see that, you'll see it from a whole bunch of people. You, you got to eliminate that from around you. That's one of the codes, family. We're going to have to delete some of these fake great debater niggas. That's what we're going to have to do. We got to get rid of the fuckery that's going on in the black population so we can start getting a real code. I'm, I'm going to start getting very specific about the codes we need to get into. What's up? Who's calling? Man, both all, this is Jackson from Chicago. How you feeling? Hey, fam. fam. How are you, man? I, did you come to my lecture out there last week? Yeah, man. I had on uh, the orange, man. We, we took a picture at McCormick Place. I, I uh, remember that. At the end, I remember that. I gave, in fact, I gave you the gift from the Culture Connection. Uh, man, I, I got on some of that shea butter now, man. i like to thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you for that that ginger beer, too. Man, I got to get some more of that ginger beer, that Jamaican ginger beer. Man, thank you so much for for the gift package, man. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Yeah, all that stuff is uh, on, on the website, too. I don't know. It should have been in the card in there, too. But uh, Give everybody, yeah, man, give everybody know, the website. Give the website, brother. Oh, man. It's uh, culturalconnection360.com. Yes, indeed. Well, yeah, and, well, and people can find us on Facebook, too, if they just go to Cultural Connection 360, Culture Connection 360. Yeah, you guys do a lot of good events out there, man. Y'all bring in a lot of speakers out there to Chicago. Who do y'all have coming up next? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I tell people always check our Facebook. Uh, we always keep people up to date. I know Umar's coming yeah. soon uh, this month. I forget. I don't know if he's going to be with us, but we usually have him whenever he's going to be here. So Umar, but we just had Professor Griff. Uh, so people just got to go to Coach Connection 360 to stay in tune. Yes, man. indeed. We, we keep people coming. Much respect, man. Much respect, brother. But, but, but real quick, I had a question for you, brother. Go ahead. I noticed, man, you had like this Secret Service security brother <laughs> with you. He was like with the, like the skinny brother with the baggy suit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, man, you know, what's going on? Like, I, you know, I, I didn't know if, if, uh, you know, if, if you were seeing some, some threats or something, I didn't know if he was a janky security or what was going on. No, 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 just to make sure everything is cool. You know what I'm saying? You know, he makes okay. sure everything is on top of top of things. My man is real serious about his. So, you know, I got okay. my, I just got my security making sure everything is on top of everything. Because, you know, what we're doing, you know, with the Hidden Color series, we're, we're waking people up, you know. So, you know, the, the white supremacists don't take kindly to that. So a lot of times they will have their coons yeah. do their dirty work. So, you know, you got to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So that's all that Indeed. Is. You dig? Uh, indeed, indeed. I salute that. I was just curious what was going on. Oh. I salute that. And again, I just want to shout you out and just say thank you for coming to Shout Town, brother. And we... Look forward to seeing you soon next time you come. Much respect. Thank you, brother. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, Brother Umar, he'll be in Chicago in April. That's what's up. Niggas say, where peanut thick ass at? She upstairs with the babies. The supplies needs my security. Dude, let me show. Y'all y'all heard about what happened to Plies. Plies was... um doing a concert in Tallahassee. What is it, Tallahassee? Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. Plies was doing a, con like doing a performance at a club somewhere. And let me see 
if I can find... Uh, Y'all probably saw it already. I don't want to show it. I was going to see if I can download it and all that, but I'm not. Most of you have seen it already. And what I saw, it was some dusty nigga who's supposed to be a fan. And I guess plies threw the guy out. <clears throat> plies threw the guy out of the... They made him get out of the club, but then Plies brought the guy back. Said, hey, man, bring him on stage. And let me let me explain something. And I, and I rock with Plies. I see a lot of people like kind of co-signing the dusty nigga who basically fell off the stage with Plies. He didn't really, he didn't really throw Plies off the stage. If you really take a look at what happened, the dude really didn't throw Plies off the stage. The there was some little dusty crackhead looking nigga who basically did a suicide jump off the stage and just took plies with him. Because if you look at the, the, the footage from different angles, plies was basically landed on top of the dude. So if you really look at the footage, the dude didn't slam plies off the stage the way people are making it seem. It was basically some kind of suicide hug that the dude did. It was some old bum-ass, dusty dupe. See, I commend Plies on trying to talk to the dude on some G shit. Plies tried to bring the dude up on stage and, and talk to him like, like a G. Out of respect, try, Plies tried to show the dude some respect. Like, hey, bring the dude back. Hey, man, look, this is the deal. And the dude was all up on Plies, kind of hugged up on him and all this old stuff. And you got to understand, you can only do... G shit and step to dudes on a G level if they got some G up in him. You can't do it on no buster ass nigga. You can't really talk to no buster ass nigga on a G level. You dig? And the dude was a buster. The bony little sucker ass dude who, who grabbed plies and basically fell off the stage. That's a bitch nigga. So Plies was talking to the dude, like, hey, man, you know, we can't be all up on each other. We two niggas, you know, come on, man. You, you know, you ain't got to be all up on me like that. So the dude standing there, all, and Plies should when the dude was all up on him like that, back that motherfucker off. That security needs to be fired. You shouldn't have never let no dusty nigga get that close up on the dude. You don't never let no dude like that get that close up on you like that. So the dude basically... Tried to sneak plies, grabbed him, and then jumped off the stage. It wasn't no slam. It wasn't no body slam. This is a suicide dive that nigga did. The nigga was a suicide dive. I mean, plies didn't, didn't get bitched up. It wasn't a bitch up. If a nigga sneak you, you try to talk to a nigga like a G, and then he pulls some little sucker ass move. Where he jump, he grabs you and then jumps off a stage, and y'all jump off stage together. That ain't no. That's just a bum-ass nigga doing bum-ass nigga shit. And that's another thing. The bum-ass nigga, he got on YouTube, him and his, sound like he, his sister, some hood rat, bragging about getting beat up. So security beat the dude's ass. This, this is how desperate Negroes have become for attention. This is how desperate Negroes will go out and get their ass whooped Show, get on camera, beat up and bloody, look like a nigga fingers broke, lip all swole, giving shout out. What's up, man? What up, shot? I just got beat up at Plies concert. Fuck that shit. I fight anybody. My Twitter, Instagram, you know, I got fucked up, shot. Okay. So niggas are bragging about getting beat up now. You don't get no props for that. Some dusty nigga get, went out and got beat up. Now he's bragging. You got people who are that desperate to get a rep. Florida has, is a lot of slaves down in Florida. I swear to God. A lot of plantation acting Negroes down in Florida. That's desperate for attention. Say his mixtape is called Stomp the Yard. <laughs> Nigga, yeah, shouting out his mixtape. Yeah, I got a new mixtape. My mixtape is called The Beat Goes On. But the nigga get no props. He gets zero props for that, that suicide dive he did. He didn't slam plies. Y'all don't even know what a slam looked like. 
that nigga didn't slam plies at all. Because when you hear it, you think that nigga picks plies up and this bony little crackhead nigga grab plies and then jump back. <laughs> What's the most suicide shit he did? Well, he knew he was going to beat up, but he the, the rep, the, the attention was worth him getting his ass whooped. You got to watch these dudes, man. Some of these so-called super fans. These niggas get real funny style at, at the drop of a hat. I don't even think Plies lost, lost, lost. Plies didn't lose street cred over that. He didn't, cause that wasn't no street shit. You didn't lose no street cred. You know, you, know, you didn't lose street cred. No, he didn't. You, you didn't lose street cred for you. You trying to shake a nigga's hand and show respect, and then he does a dusty nigga move. He's a dusty nigga. You try to bring a nigga up and talk to him on some G shit, and then he pulls a dusty little crackhead move. No. It's, I blame security for letting dude up on him like that. Yeah, you don't lose street cred over a sucker punch. That was a sucker dive. Man, let's see who we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Uh, King Flex, K Dims from Long Island, New York. How you doing? What shit? Who is this? Kate Dibbs from Long Island, New York. What's going on, King Flex? Just want to make sure everything's make sure everything is good. K Dibbs, K Dibbs, K Dibbs. Yeah, why that sound familiar? Uh, can we be spoke? I just want to make sure everything was good because uh, you know we're not following each other on uh, the Twitter. And um, I did have an actual question. Of, wait, <laughs> wait, hold on. Wait, me. wait, wait, wait. Are you the dude that, that's been emailing me that bullshit? Yeah. Uh, what's what's your deal, dude? That's the, speaking of motherfuckers who's supposed to be fans. Now this uh, dude right here, what, what's your, what's your name? Kenny Kenneth. Yeah, that's my name. What's going on? Now why is it, this dude right here keeps emailing me fucking porno? Why do you keep e why are you emailing me porno, dude? The reason I was doing that was because I was trying to describe what was going on at the end of the first one and stuff that was shouldn't be, you know, how stop, 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 First of all, okay. do you think that it's, just, it? okay, just listen, just listen. Do you think that it's cool to email another man pornography? I mean, it depends that the context of what's going on. I'm trying to explain Ain't myself no, and you know, defend my actions. Fuck you keep... Bro, you know I don't want you to send what you sending another dude pornography. Hey man, look at this link. Dude, do I you know good and well I don't want to watch no pornography from some other nigga on on uh, an email? Why would you send okay. me pornography? So I dude? take that back. I should I shouldn't have done that. Why and, would you, know, you send another man? I, I sound like I sound like like Damon Dash. But do you really where you from where you think sending a dude a bunch of pornography is some cool shit to do? I never said it was cool. But you kept cool doing point. it, though. I, you kept doing it, though. Uh, all right, and I, and I admit that, and, and I want to, you know. If you want to prove a point, just like you kept sending these porno links, you're like, hey, man, check this out. I look at it, it's some chick sucking a dick. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I just want you to, right. I want you to look at it. No, nigga, just tell me what the fuck you're trying to say. I kept telling you, hey, man, tell me what your point is. Don't send me no okay. link of motherfucker sucking dicks and all. Tell me what you want, want me to know. What's the point of you... Sending me this. Don't show me a link. Just tell me okay. what the point is, and you wouldn't tell me the point. You got it, King Flex. You got that point. But now I'm trying to just, you know, give you a topic of discussion. You know, tonight I had a question. I know. What, what, ain't no question, dude. I still want to talk about why you think okay. it's cool to send me porno, and you're trying to brush it off. All what right. kind of well, moist shit is that, dude? That's, yeah, don't you I think that's wrong. kind of moist? I was, I was wrong. So that that's why I don't I don't follow niggas on Twitter and Instagram who do shit like that. That's why I block you, dude. I don't want to, and, and, and I'm telling you I don't want to see that shit. And you're trying to, then you say, hey man, can I call you? Can we talk about it, nigga? You, you know what you sound like, dude. Yeah, I, I come off like that, but if you knew me personally, and got to know I don't want to know you personally, like, dude. You trying to send me porno and talk to me on the phone and all this old whole shit. Nah, nah, nah. Definitely not a whole nigga. Can't fly but dude, that. sending dudes porno uh -huh. and then trying to talk to niggas on the phone about it. I, first, I don't know you from a can of paint. I don't. 
Okay. Second, okay. I don't like niggas sending me porno. Third, I ain't about to talk to them nigga on no phone who's sending me some goddamn porno. Okay. You, you understand? I mean, and, and, you, I, and, you, I, and I also right. and I told totally you. Right about that. All right, and I told you, and I also told you, don't contact me. And why you calling? Why you calling now? The reason I was calling tonight was just to know how does one go about building up the following on Twitter and Instagram because I see you have you had well over a hundred thousand followers, and I'm not a world class speaker like you are, you know. But at the same time, I want to know what so if you give a few like techniques to get more followers. And um, technique number one: stop being moist. All right, that's technique okay. number one. Stop being moist. Okay. Stop being uh, weird. You, you got it? All uh, right. Is that a vibrate in the back, man? What the fuck is that in the back? Are you nah, fondling nah, your booty hole while you're talking to nah, me, man? Nah. What the fuck is that in the background, man? You a fucking that, weirdo. Nah, nah, nah. It's what the hell are you doing to yourself, laptop. nigga? I hear something fans vibrating my, in the back. Man, if you don't... It's a fan man, my laptop. Get the... Man, it's, hold it's on. Get out! Damn nigga. Get your ass off my for that nigga's in there fondling his booty hole. Fuck out of here. This nigga got a vibrator or something in the background. Y'all see the kind of weirdos I gotta deal with? Fuck, man. What, what what happened to dudes, man? What what happened to niggas, man? What what this niggas sitting up calling me sitting in a male thong with us with something vibrating in the background. This nigga was sending me porno links. I'm like, dude, don't I don't want to see these links. He kept sending me porno links. Kenneth Dim or some shit like that. I'm like, dude, I don't want to see this shit. What is wrong with you? Man, can I call you? Can we talk about it? No, nigga. I just want to talk to you about it. Hear my number. Give me his phone. What the fuck? That's why I got security. Some of you niggas might be rapists. I don't want to be like on stage like Plies and a nigga roll up and put some chloroform on my mouth and take me somewhere and then Try to <laughs> give me a roofie. <laughs> I don't want a nigga try to knock me out and rape me. This nigga. And then read some J Slim poems. I wake up in a nigga's dungeon. That nigga got a J Slim poem book. As I tie you around your waist, put dick in your face. This nigga gonna chloroform me and then get a J Slim poem book. <laughs> uh, good Lord. Man, these niggas, these naggas. Man, y'all not gonna stress me out. <clears throat> What's up? What's up? Who's calling? Hey, man, I don't like the way you're talking about my kids and stuff, calling him Dusty and all that shit, man. Who are you, nigga? Man, shit, I'm a nigga that's playing plies, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that shit, man. You don't, you don't, you don't represent shit like that in Florida. You don't call us no damn Dusty, nigga. Nigga, what? <laughs> Why you sound like you got balls in your mouth, nigga? It was any really kind of balls in my mind, man. I seen a picture with you on your Instagram. You had a white mouth like you had some balls in your mouth, man. That was your mom's titties, nigga. Her titties are so small, they look like nuts. You bitch-ass nigga. Get out of here, you oh. damn nigga. Get your ass out of here. All right. All right. So uh, I see it's Crackhead Sunday. All right. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's up? It's Rick. This Freaky, man. What's up, Freaky? I, what, you from Chicago, Freaky? Yeah. What's on your mind, Freak? I was trying to see if I could say a little quick poem for y'all real quick, man. Is it from Jay Slim's poem book? No, nah, man. It's from mine, man. What's the name of your poem book? It's uh, Freaky Weird Folks. All right. Let's, let's hear one of your poems, brother. Okay. Check it out. If tomatoes land on the sun, will it melt? If popcorn can come out of your earlobes while you're 12 years old, will Elvis pop out of his grave and start twerking? 
who is nurse? If you close the curtain, yeah, I hear you, damn person. nigga. All right, <laughs> all right. So they they've been selling some bad weed for the month of April. All right. <laughs> All right, what's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? My uh, name's Rashid. I'm calling out of uh, Maryland. Rashid from Maryland. How you doing, brother? I'm 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 all right. I'm all right. Um, I just I just wanted to uh, just throw a couple questions at you. One, go ahead. Man. You know, I want want to commend you on the uh, Hidden Colors One Two Three and yes, the fours coming out. Yes, indeed. And um, I first want to ask you, like, what what would you say would be the next step? after the education because i know with the one the hidden colors colors one two three and four are coming out yeah i mean there's a lot of information out there and you know it's, it's being received being received very well right but after the education what do you say what do you say the next stage is into making that 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 positive progression for the black folks well we, we talked about that in the solution see that's the thing what makes our documentaries different we provide solutions in every single one one thing we, we talked about in all three films was economic empowerment, which is the all most right. important thing we need to do. We got to get our economic game in order. Also, we got to get a code of conduct that we spread among each other, things that we do, things that we will not do, because we've never, as African-American people, we've never had a code of conduct at all, ever. There has never been a code of conduct with us, and we've all never right. had an agenda. We got to have an agenda. If you do not have an agenda, you will not get anything done. We're just all over the place. You get 10, right, right, 10 right. different black folks in the room. They got 10 different life goals. One person, they, <laughs> want, they want to get a job with white folks. Another person, they want to turn up at the club. Another motherfucker want to smoke weed. Another person want a record deal. Another person want to be an athlete. We ain't really got no cohesive goal as African people. Well, so, here, here, here's a, here's a question I thought on, on, on top of that. Like, all right, so... With that, would you say that we need some type of like satellite uh, communities or headquarters or so, if you will, to kind of like reach those areas that, that are in need and, and to, to, to branch out that way? Or where, where, where do we start from with that? We, we start how, with each other. Start, it's the person. See, the thing is, we, we get concerned with changing other people. Let's just start with us. It starts right, as the right. person to look in the mirror and say, okay, as a code of conduct, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm not going to do. And I want to have a code, me personally, this is what we say to ourselves in the mirror. I want to have a code that's going to empower everyone else who looks like me. You understand? Yeah. And see, we get caught up in, well, let me try to wake those niggas up. Let me try to wake these people up. And we get caught <laughs> up in that and we stop focusing on ourselves because when we focus on ourselves and get our own code, we're going to gravitate towards other people with the same goals and the same codes in mind. So right. it, it starts from there. A code first. We get that code first. We're good to go. Thank you for the call, brother. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, indeed. Uh, there was a, a riot out there in Kentucky last night after the um, Final Four game. There was a, a, a riot, and the media, boy, they downplayed that riot. Those students, they were out there turning over cars. They were setting fires, and they just, they had to bring the riot police out there. And, you know, the, the media just referred to them as just rowdy, now, 31 people had to be arrested, by the way. And I said on Twitter, 31 thugs had to be arrested. I blame Iggy Azalea and her music for being a, a, a negative influence on their minds. See, that's why we got to get our own media, family. That's why we got to get our own media. And that's why we have to maintain our own media. And that's where Hidden Colors comes in. That's the start of of our media. As of now, the only global media that tells the truth that we have right now is the Hidden Color series. This is why it's important to support it and chill out with the damn bootleg. That's that whole zero code shit. It's like we ain't gonna have a code. We just gonna do whatever and then we end up whatever. Let's see who we got. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, what's up, Flex? What's up, who's this? Yeah, it's uh, Rico from New Orleans. Rico from New Orleans. What's on your mind, Rico? Man, I got a good question for you. A long time ago, you spoke about um, 
took me to the Paul Mooney clip for Hayden Cullen. Yeah. And what I wanted to ask you was, with all of the extra footage you have, would it be a good idea to do like an extra kind of like a hidden color to review special where you can, you can see all the extended stuff that you can uh, edit out? Yeah, I might do that later on down the line. I might do it later on down the line. My, my biggest concern right now is just to get overall messages out. So some of the behind the scenes stuff and all that, that'll come later. Because right now we got a lot of work to do and we need more black people to kind of get that we have work to do. So I just want to get the messages out there as far and wide as possible. All right, but thanks for the call, right. brother. Yes, indeed. Jizzy says, why don't black media promote hidden colors? Name black media. Name a black media outlet. <laughs> Let's start there. Name a black media outlet. I ain't talking about a, a white-owned media outlet with a black section because that's what black media is right now. What black media? You're talking about white-owned media with a black section. Again, it's like Walmart and the hair section. Black media is basically the hair section at Walmart. You know, all Walmarts, they have a, a one shelf or half a shelf, which is the black hair section. And that's black media, basically. Only real black media that's global, that's really resonating, is Ebony is co-owned by White's brother. Ebony is co-owned by White's brother. And yeah, Black Star talks about hidden colors all the time. Atlanta Black Star, they talk about us. Independent websites, they talk about, they, they bring us up. But in, in some of those websites, like Huffington Post, they, they've done stories. You know, because we, we had a publicity firm, you know, hook up all that stuff. So they, they've done stories. But this is why, this is so important why, see, black folks, we get into the habit of complaining to not do something. If you complain enough, nothing is going to get done. People will sit up and talk, well, people should stop watching Empire. We need to, okay, if we don't watch Empire, what should we watch? We should watch more positive stuff. Okay, well, damn it, you got more positive stuff with hidden colors, but you're bootlegging. See, that's why I don't, I, 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 when I hear people say little shit, trying to down Tyler Perry or Empire or whatever, you know, I, I, I know at the end of the day, when something progressive comes out, they'll come up with a way to, to not support that too. You dig? So we got to stop the bullshit because nothing is more positive than the Hidden Color series. Nothing. Nothing is it, nothing is more positive than that. It's all rolled in one. Everything positive, progressive, and people will still sit up and, and bootleg that, and then talk about empire. Don't. That's why I don't want to hear shit about nobody complaining about empire or nothing. If people are out here and you allowing them to bootleg the hidden color series, because that should be a code of conduct that everybody should enforce. When you see a motherfucker bootlegging something like Hidden Colors, you say, hey, man, that, you, that's not what you do. That ain't what you do. Because, see, those in the, in the dominant society, they maintain their finances and they maintain power through economics. We don't want to get that. We don't want to get that. What's up, Shadina? A lot of folks in the room. But, um, yeah, like I said, we're, we're working on Hidden Colors 4 now. It's going to be popping. Yeah, bootlegging, buying bootleg DVDs, that's such a... I never bought bootleg DVDs. That ain't. That's just not been my style. That's just some dusty nigga shit to do. To not buying a, a bootleg DVD that's half ass. I, I don't like half ass quality, me personally. I, I just don't like half ass quality of anything. I'm not about to sit up with a bunch of bootleg DVDs. That, that shit is, you know, 
that says a lot about what you think about yourself. I don't like bootleg DVDs, bootleg music, none of that shit. So we we got to start getting that code. And Fast and Furious was good. Furious 7 was good. I liked it. I saw Furious 7 um, last night. We, me and the family went, and it was pretty good. And um, that franchise, do you know that franchise, shit, man, the, the Fast and Furious franchise, that's just a license to print money. The last couple of ones made damn near a billion dollars each. Y'all know that? The Fast and Furious franchise, them shits be making like $600 million, $700 million. I mean, that shit, each movie, the last few ones have made, I'm not, I'm not going to give no spoilers, I'm not. But each one of those movies for the last couple of years have made almost a billion dollars. And this one is going, I think this one that, that's out now, I think that's going to hit the billion dollar mark. I think this one, this Fast and Furious franchise, I think it's going to hit the billion dollar mark. I think it's going to hit the billion dollar mark. That, that film, it is a license to print money. And I'm not mad at him. I, hey man, my hat goes off to The Rock. To Tyrese, Ludacris, Vin Diesel, all of them, man. My hat goes off to them. It is. It's a black franchise, really. It's really a black franchise. Because all of the, the stars are black. Other than Paul Walker, basically most of the stars in the movie are black. And let's just be real. Paul Walker, name another movie Paul Walker was in. What you mean, Curtis? And they're gonna get another person to replace Paul Walker. How is it not a how is it not a black see you don't look at it because they don't really bring it up? It is a black franchise. It is. All the the people starring in it are black. The Rock is black. Vin Diesel is black. Ludacris is black. Tyrese is black. So that's a black series. It's a black franchise. The selling point, then Vin Diesel is the selling point. See, Paul Walker was not the selling point of Hidden Color. I mean, not Hidden, Hidden Color, of Fast and Furious. Paul Walker was not the, the, the selling point of Fast and Furious. Um, you are whatever your name is. I just banned you, brother. You, you okay. I'm, I'm banning some of y'all people just trolling and I just banned you. What do you what what you think Vin Diesel is? Vin Diesel is Vin Diesel is black. Vin Diesel is black. No, it's not black owned. Of course it's not black owned. Hey, what what's black owned? <laughs> Shit. How many things are black owned if we're gonna go there? But the people who are starring in the movie are black. I'm saying the people who are starring in it are black and they promoted it as basically a universal type film. They don't bring up too much about race in the, in the film. The Rock's dad is black. You say The Rock is Samoan. The Rock's dad is black. Rock's mother was Samoan. Vin Diesel is black and Italian. DJ Willie, I'm talking about a movie that was big that Paul Walker was in. Yeah, so you know it, it's it's a black series. 
They just promote it differently. You dig? And there's certain movies that you have a lot. For example, Coming to America with Eddie Murphy, that was basically an all black cast. A lot of people didn't catch it though. Because what we think, when we think of something black, usually it has to be some hood shit. And that's why we got to kind of start thinking outside of the block, the box. When we think of black, it has to be something about the hood or something. So whenever you see black people doing something that ain't basically hood, we don't think of it as black a lot of times. Yeah, exactly. Boomerang too. Boomerang was another movie that had an all black cast. It had, it had an all black cast. And you don't look at it as a black movie. I'm not talking about the supporting characters, James. I mean, there's, there's, of course, there's white supporting characters and all that. But in Coming to America, that was a black movie. It was um, shit. Damn, everybody in the movie, all the, the main characters were black. Oh, yeah, that there's a female, a new chick, a new sister, who was in the Fast Furious movie, the new one. She's fine as hell. Some British sister. She was fine in the motherfucker. Yeah, Boomerang, that's my all-time favorite movie. But yeah, Coming to America, all black cast. Because they were talking about coming to America like when it came out back in the, the 80s, how they were having, they were, they thought they were going to have trouble selling it over in China and places like that because it was an all-black movie. But he says he identifies with a person of color, so the part black, well, it does matter. He, he's, he's half black. He's a half black person. So you can get up and say you're an alien. That ain't going to stop what you you are. That dude has that African bloodline. That was Eddie Murphy playing the Jewish dude in Coming to America. Eddie Murphy played that. Yeah, Eddie was the Jewish dude. You didn't know Vin Diesel was part black? Yeah, Vin, yeah, that, that's kind of, yeah, Vin Diesel is part black. I'm surprised people didn't know Vin Diesel was part black. What the fuck y'all think Vin Diesel was? And y'all know that ain't his name. His name is Vincent something. I forgot what his name is. But yeah, that's the thing. A lot of us, man, when we think of a black movie, it has to be something in the hood, have having to do with hood problems. No, we got to start thinking outside the box. We got to start thinking outside of the box and, and start doing stuff that ain't necessarily connected with the hood. We, we got to start thinking more creatively. And I'm still putting together a web series. I'm still trying to come up with some ideas for a, a web series. I want to do something dramatic. I want to do something dramatic for the web series. You know, I'm tossing around ideas with the staff, something I kind of wanted to do like a post-apocalyptic thing. Just something, I don't know. I'm just kicking around a bunch of different ideas. I want to do a real, real tight web series. Yeah, I can't wait till the new NWA movie come out. I can't wait for that to come out. What's up, James? I would love to get him in there. I would love to get Minister Farrakhan in Hidden Colors 4. We, we, we want to do that. 
it's, it's kind of difficult getting in touch with our brother, but I do want to get that. I do. I would love to get Minister Farrakhan for Hidden Colors 4. Is Shug still in the hospital? No, Shug. I don't know what's going on with Shug. Yeah, I got to holler at my man from Voodoo Wings. That just happened. You know, I just got back in town, so. He said Ben Jenkins. <laughs> he said Ben Diesel's name is Ben Jenkins. No, I'm not going to do a comedy yet. I want to do something like a dramatic, something dramatic. Something fly. Let's see who this is. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Tariq. This is uh, Jay from Seattle. What's your name, brother? Uh, Jay from Seattle. Jay from Seattle. What's on your mind, Jay? How's it going, brother? You know what? Uh, a few weeks ago, I was, heard your, uh, I was listening to your cast. You were talking about the interracial relationship and how um, you know the mainstream media can use that against us. So I just wanted you to really elaborate on that a little bit more because um, I was speaking of uh, a few friends of mine and we we're having a conversation um, about, you know, how certain people can lose their pro-blackness if they date outside of their race. So I just really wanted to, you know, know your input on that and what you thought about that. So so you say how some some people can lose their pro-blackness if they date outside their race? Yeah, I mean, some people question it, you know. I mean, because... You know, say for instance, I, I I'm dating I'm dating a white girl. Okay. But uh, you know, my brothers uh, they don't date no white girls, and they and they sometimes they question and they say, you know, you, you ain't as black as that sometimes. And some people might say that, but I just want to ask you, I guess, you know, can you still be pro black and date outside of your race? Yeah, you can, just as long as you know who you are, and just as long as you're not trying to assimilate into the society of the people you're dating. It, you just got to have a consciousness of who you are. And okay. what happens is that a lot of dudes, when they date interracially, they put on their coon boots or they start yeah. bed winching. And, and then you're being used as a tool against other black people. So I, I can understand why black people have been historically weary of that, mm -hmm. but I also say black people are going to have to get in a position to be able to issue out punishments or rewards because ain't no real reward for being pro-black as they say. People like to toss around the term pro-black. There are no rewards being so-called pro-black at this mm -hmm. stage because we don't have a code of conduct. Even with the Hidden Color series, it's the most successful documentary series which is the great thing, which is the good news. The bad news is about 60% of the sales are bootleg. So yeah. people will still sabotage something like that because mm -hmm. they know that it's black owned and other black folks will sabotage it because black folks are taught to not value blackness. So there is yeah, no absolutely. benefit for so-called being pro-black. It has to be something, it's a labor of love. You understand? It's a sacrifice. And this is why yeah. we have so many. Now, cooning, there's a lot of money in cooning and bug dancing and bed winching and selling out. There's a lot of money well, in that. It's lucrative to coon. It's very lucrative to coon. So my thing is this. Any person who wants to be progressive in the black community, I don't listen to niggas talking about what you ain't pro-black enough and all that because what have they done? My thing is this. Show me all these niggas who complain because, again, you can go out and date somebody who looks like Lapita and these niggas are still complaining. So you date yeah. whoever you want to date who's best for you and not for the whole complaining crowd because I know how these niggas are. They sit up and talk that pro-black shit and you ain't black enough and they'll be somewhere kissing all white ass day in and day out. <laughs> Those be the main yeah. white ass kisses. So my thing is this. What are you building? Ask these people, what are they building so I can be a part of that and I can step away from what I'm doing and build with them? You did? Because I'm not in the complaining just to complain business. I'm in the building yeah. business. If niggas ain't building and they ain't trying to build and they just want to complain, a lot of those niggas who talk all that, oh, man, you got a white girl, you ain't down. Them niggas want a white woman in their damn self, to be honest. <laughs> I learned that. Yeah. Them niggas themselves, they want a goddamn white woman. And the minute they get some money or an opportunity, they'll get a white woman too. So don't let niggas fool yeah. you. 
All right, but thank you, for, thank you for the call. Thanks for taking the call, brother. All right. When uh, people can get all hotepish when it's convenient, just like what's that Azealia Banks chick? She was all a few like a month ago. She was all on this old pro black thing with that Azealia Azealia Banks, whatever her name. And I ain't never heard one record of this young lady. But Azealia Banks, she's a great example. She was all black this, black that, we black folks, black, 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 black. And the minute Playboy called her little black ass, the minute Playboy called her, she bust her booty cheeks wide open and then start bragging about how she likes dating white men. Overnight. She was pro-black as hell a month ago. She got up in Playboy. Now she loves white men. <laughs> she switched up so fast. <laughs> I haven't heard one album from that young lady. That woman was talking all that black shit. So a month ago, she was all on Twitter getting black, this black, 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 black. That's why I told you, I don't trust no sister with a flat ass. She ain't got no ass. That's why I don't trust no sister with no flat ass. I do not trust the sister with no ass. She bust them little black cheeks wide open. <laughs> man. Man, man, man. I don't even know what her music is. But again, you watch all these people who get real blackity black, 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 blackity black, black, and they ain't building nothing. They'll change up so fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, they get blackity black, black. What's up, Brenda? You say not everybody has a big butt. Brenda, call in. Brenda, had, we got a little booty listener who got upset with the comment about sisters with no ass. Brenda, call up. Even the name Brenda. That sounds like a little booty name, Brenda. <laughs> Brenda, call up, love. 818-850-5404. What's up, MJ? You say your woman ain't got no ass? What's that show, Black Ink? That show Black Ink where everybody on there looking like they high as hell. What's that? The light-skinned chick with the cute face but the real, real bony body. What's her name? Shay? What's her name? What's the chick on Black Ink? The light-skinned chick with the, the little... She got a real flat ass. Pretty face but a flat ass. Yeah, Peanut got a booty. Sky. Yeah, that's her name. Sky. Now, Sky, another sister with no ass, she, so she, there was an episode where she brought her boyfriend up in the shop, in the tattoo shop. Her boyfriend is up in the shop, and she's in the back room with another nigga kissing him. I'm like, if that ain't nothing but flat booty ratchetness, that ain't nothing but flat booty ratchetness right there. I told you you can't trust no flat booty ass sister. Boy, you can't trust the sister with no ass. And then she went to jail because she was stealing. So I'm like, you know, she, she got arrested. She had a felony warrant. I'm like, boy, you cannot trust no sister with no ass. They be doing all types of shit to come up, man. I, I, I've said this a million times. Whenever you have a sister, especially in the hood with no ass, you better hide your wallet. They scandalous as hell. They got to do all types of little shit to come up. Sister with a nice ass, niggas, the people will give you shit. You got a nice ass, shit will get done. You just, you know, put on the right clothes, some shit will get done for you. But them chicks with no ass in the hood, no, they got to steal a little bit. They got to boost and shoplift. No, there's some skinny, no, no, because I, I, I know some skinny women with bubbles. 
those are the hey, a skinny chick with a bubble. They got the world as they oyster, goddammit. Just because you skinny don't mean you got a flat ass. I know some skinny chicks with a nice bubble on them. I'm talking about chicks with no ass, sisters with no ass. There's a reason why people get them booty shots. There's a reason. What's up, Ola? There's a reason why women are going out of their way to get all them booty shots. Let's see who we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hello? That's good. Hey, what's up, man? Who's this? It's BP. Nigga, why the fuck are you breathing like that, dude? What's going on, man? Uh, BP from NY. I know. I know. Nigga, who the fuck are you whispering to? <laughs> hey, man, I get more... I got more chips than you, my dude. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, dude, right, get uh, out of here, you damn nigga. Get your moist ass out of here whispering to other niggas. This whole ass nigga called me up whispering to another nigga. Hello? Hold on one second. Is this moist Sunday? Um, Hello? This nigga whispering to another dude. What the fuck is going on with y'all niggas tonight, man? Hey, man, it's Tariq. Hold on, I'm gonna make you a sandwich later. It's a lot of moist activity going on in this bitch tonight, man. <laughs> oh, whispering ass niggas. These niggas then went to church. They got their Easter suit on. And they're hitting up the moist nigga clubs. What's up? Who's calling? Hello? Hello? Hey, who's this? This is Brittany. Brittany? Yeah. Hey, Brittany, how are you? Where are you calling from, Brittany? I'm actually in the car listening to you for the first time. Okay. Okay. What, what what city are you in, by the way? Um, we were coming from Los Angeles, and I'm on my way back to the Bay Area. Oh. And I was just wondering why you went from talking about how women are so beautiful and stuff in magazines and black women, but it has nothing to do with their body type. Wait, 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 say that one more time. I didn't get that. Somebody's mind has nothing to do with what their body looks like. So why don't you talk about that? Oh, so you say somebody's mind has nothing to do with what their body looks like? Yeah, like you're in a position to change people's minds and you're over here talking about whether someone's booty is big or not. That has nothing to do with anything. Well, yes, it does. Yes, it no, does. Doesn't. Yes, the hell it doesn't. Your body has a lot to do. Ma'am, ma'am, wait, wait, ma'am. Ma'am, wait, ma'am, 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 ma'am. You're trying to say a person's body and the way they look has a lot to do with their mindset. Let's be very real. If a person is like very overweight, that's going to have a lot to do with their mind psychologically. For the most part, that has a lot to do with their self-image. That has a lot to, to do with them psychologically. Men and women. Men and women, just in general. If you got people out here with a handicap, that's going to have a, uh, something that's going to have a bearing on their mind. So a person's physicalities will definitely have a bearing on their, their, their mind and their ideology and their outlook on life. And women... With bigger booties, especially, I'm talking about sisters. I'm talking specifically about sisters. When you have sisters, especially in the hood, and they ain't got a, a ass, they got not just no ass, they got like a flat ass. I've seen women like that be a little more scandalous than women who have nicer asses. I've seen this personally. You don't think that's a little ignorant to just generalize people like that? Like you're it, talking about a because I'm talking to a general audience. I'm talking to a general audience. So I, I, I can generalize because I'm talking to a general audience. You can generalize based on um, evidence of certain things. So, of course, not all, but I've seen on a lot. And some of my listeners, they can co-sign. A lot of sisters, when they have flat asses, they don't really get the, the kind of attention as girls with nicer asses do. That's why a lot of women get... Booty shots now. 
Do you do, do why do you think so many women are getting booty shots out here? I don't know, I don't have that problem. No, I didn't ask you if you had the problem. Why do you think so many women are doing it? <laughs> I mean that could be the reason. They they what? Thanks. I said that could be the reason. Thanks for clarifying. I didn't know that one had anything to do with the other. But though. why do you think? Well, just just why do you think so many like you go to Instagram and it's just like booty shots galore on Instagram. Why do you think that is? Because people have no self-esteem and they need attention. Now, why would you generalize like that? That's just being disrespectful and you're generalizing those people. How do you know if they have self-esteem or not? Because a lot of my friends do it and they have low self-esteem. Oh, okay. So why are you hanging around with people with low self-esteem? Because I can build them up sort of like you're in a position to build people up instead of making fun of their body image so you can do the same thing. Well, you just made fun of their body images, and you made you just made fun of their self esteem. You just said they have low self esteem. You said your own friends have low self esteem. Now, if you can build people up, why would you tear them down like that? Be nice. And what's your name, Brittany? What? Your name is Brittany, right? Mm hmm Okay. Get out of here, you damn nigga! Get your ass out of here, Brittany. All right. Who else do we have? Yeah, she's getting quiet, trying to think of more bullshit. So let me get her up out of there. All right. <laughs> Good night, Brittany. <laughs> I hate to have to do that to you, Brittany. I had to shame you a little bit, but it is what it is. You know, she, she got quiet. She didn't think her bullshit out all the way through. What's up? Who's calling? What's up, man? Who's this? This is Mustafa calling from St. Louis. See how you feel? I'm good, Mustafa. What's on your mind, brother? Man, I, I got a quick question for you, man. And I know you all, uh, you know, I know you're familiar with the whole internet uh, radio thing, man. I got an opportunity to uh, put some money down to start a, 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 a little station, but I'm just from, I'm just curious. Is it? Can you make? Uh, is, it, is it a good investment, basically? For for a station or like an internet? State, like what kind of station you're talking about, brother? Um, 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 an internet radio station. Um, uh, there's some guys in Atlanta. Uh, they're coming to build the studio and set the station up, and it's going uh, through TuneIn and I think it's called LaunchCast and some more other sites. But I'm just curious before I invest my money, is it a good investment to do? What you want to find out is who's going to be the talent. That's what. That's the only thing you need to find out as far as radio, internet radio, or anything. Don't let dudes try to sell you the technology. They'll try to sell you on the technology. They'll start bragging about the kind of microphones they got, the kind of equipment they got, the kind of boards they got. All of this equipment and mics and sound boards and all this old shit. What is the talent? Because at the end of the day, in any kind of broadcast, any kind of radio, internet radio, whatever, it all boils down to the talent. It's the talent that's going to make people tune in. You understand? Right, right, right. I mean, I, 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 I real quick, I got some ideas, and I, and I think I can push it. But I'm just, I'm just curious about that market because I know people are turning away from terrestrial radio. Right, they are. And I'm curious. I'm just curious, you know, if I, because I got some, some ideas and some stuff that I want to push, and it just, like, like I say, it, it's nothing. You get to basically control the media and put the message out there if you want. But you got to gotta have the right talent to bring that in, man. The talent is the most right. important thing, man. Who are you going to get to bring the audience in? That's why my shows pop off, man. And I don't use a whole bunch of um, super duper highly technical shit. Sometimes I do my I, sometimes I do my show on a beach. I'm, I'm on a beach somewhere. I hook a microphone up to my iPad and then I do the show at the beach. So you don't need all that. If you got the right content and the right talent, that's what matters. So y'all got to bring in people who are interesting and who's going to draw an audience, man. At the end of the you day, reckon. you need somebody you who's reckon. going to draw the audience. But anyway, thank you for the call, brother, because this brother's going to go on and on asking the same question over and over again. And that's the bottom line. My friend out here in Los Angeles, Big Boy, Big Boy, big radio guy out here in Los Angeles, Big Boy was at Power 106 for years. iHeartRadio, they started a station called 92.3 The Real. And they got him. They, you know, they brought him over. And they brought 
that Power 106 audience over. They gave Big, I think they're giving him like $10 million or something like that. They're giving him a grip. And they're giving him big money because he brings in the listeners. You dig? They're bringing him in because Big Boy brings in the listeners. But yeah, like I said, man, there's a reason why so many women are getting those booty shots. There's a reason why they're doing it is because they know that there's value to that ass. They know. And, and especially when there's a recession in the hood, a sister with a flat ass, it ain't popping. Now, what happens is that the sisters with the flat ass, and I talked about this before, they either get real scandalous or they become a bed wench. They get around white dudes, and they like that. And then you really can't trust them then because then they become pawns of white supremacy. Let's see who we got here. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, three. What's up? Who's calling? Oh, this is uh, Ken from Texas. Ken from Texas. What's on your mind, man? Hey, I just want to ask you a quick question, man. Um, I've been showing, like, the uh, hidden clues to uh, different people. Right. And one thing I kind of noticed about it is that, like, when I show it to, like, black men, yeah, they get it immediately. Yeah. They, but when I show it to black women, for some reason, they're kind of, kind of like, hesitant to actually... You know, get into what the message is, and for some reason, like I said, they just can't, you know, get into it. It's like they almost resist it. The information. No, you're probably you're, you, you're probably trying to show it to like like real, real deep Christian church women. That's who it yeah. sounds like. Because women get it. Women do get it. Women do get yeah. it. Women get it. Women will get it, and women will support it. Women will support it faster than a lot of dudes, because dudes be the ones bootlegging it. But women get it. Now, what you're talking about, you're talking about those deep, because you're down in Texas, so you're talking about those those deep, deep church people who's afraid, yeah. and a lot of them, they're afraid that if they watch the Hidden Color series, that's going to wake them up and make them change religions. You know? Uh, because any, yeah, because anything... Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I actually showed it to this, uh, this black girl, the first one, first Hidden Color one, and the only thing she kind of really objected to was that part when you talked about Jesus, and mm -hmm. she said that's why she didn't like, you know, she said, uh, you know, those trials, that trial about doesn't matter what color he is. Yeah, that's the thing. And Brother Umar said that in the movie. That's another thing. It, black folks have been so brainwashed. If you tell black people that Jesus wasn't white, some black folks would get offended by that. You know how, oh, sad, yeah. you know how sad that is? If, yeah, you tell, oh, yeah. Yeah. if you tell black people, hey, man, you know, there, there wasn't no white dude named Jesus, man. You know, if, if, if Jesus exists, if he existed, he could, and there's no way he could have been. He couldn't have been white. He just could not have been white. Based on mm -hmm. the geography and where he was at the time, he just couldn't have been white. And black people, some black folks, have such a plantation mentality and such a need for a white leader and a white daddy and a white savior and a white God that offends them. And those are Negroes you need to be away from anyway. Uh, yeah, it's a whole lot of down this way, though. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because my thing is... I, I saw a tweet, again, years ago when Hidden Colors first came out. Some black girl, southern girl, she was like, yeah, I saw Hidden Colors. They were saying that the original people in Asia were black. I don't believe that, though. And I'm like, uh -huh. you can go over there and see them now. They're still over there. You It wasn't like we didn't have proof. But also, black folks have been so conditioned and brainwashed they won't believe a lot of shit unless a white person tells them, brother. You can you can bring them all the proof in the world. I can come go bring an Asian person from Asia, from one of those villages, who look like Akon and have them sit here and tell you, I'm from Asia. Niggas still won't believe it until a white person says, okay, you can believe it now. You yeah. know? So we got to understand the brainwashing that that's happening with a lot of black folks out here. It's going to take a little work. 
So that's that's the work that we're into. We got to just understand that we we have to deal with that. And again, just keep on pushing and don't get distracted by the people who want to remain asleep. There's enough people who are waking up. Focus on them. You feel me? Oh, yeah, I'm working on them. I'm yes, working sir. on them. Yeah, thank you, brother. That's that. Yeah, people, if we bring you the truth and you still want to sit up and, oh, I like hidden colors, but man... It don't matter what color Jesus was. Okay, good. Stay right where you are then, brother. All right. Stay right over there. I, I'm not, I don't have anything else to say to that person. All these, it don't matter what color Jesus was. Stay right there. Stay right where you are. I don't want you over here because you're going to contaminate all the other people who are waking up over here. No, Yokia, the young people have been watching Hidden Colors, and that's the thing. So that's what I made the, the Hidden Colors series for, because the young people, they haven't been brainwashed as much. So they're still in that rebellious stage where they're open to listening, because that's all rebels do. Rebels are basically people looking for a code. That's all rebels are. When people rebel, those are people who are looking for a code. And we have a lot of people rebelling in black society because we have no code of conduct. People get into gangs because even in a gang and on the streets, there's a code of the streets. The streets have, it's a shabby code, but there is somewhat of a code of the streets. Young people are looking for a code. And we as a, adults, and I, I will say they as adults, a lot of black adults have not been able to give them one. I won't say we because I've been trying my damnness. What's up, Jay? You can get it at HiddenColorsFilm.com. Yeah, but the young people, they are rocking with the Hidden Colors series. And a lot of the rappers, too. When you hear a lot of rappers now, you can hear the, the influence of the Hidden Colors series. You can hear it. And you can go to HiddenColorsFilm.com. HiddenColorsFilm.com. You need to get your copy today, the official copy. Stop getting those bootlegs and then complain that we don't have anything. Yeah, yeah, go Mac. That's true. It's like we don't matter what color Jesus is as long as he's white. Because what we did in the Hidden Color series, they can't say we were wrong because we, we showed pictures and ancient paintings of the Jesus figure, and we show the correlation between Christ and the African gods, we, you can't refute it. And wait to Hidden Colors 4. We're going to get really deep. We're going to make a lot of people mad with Hidden Colors 4. We're going to get real, real deep into religion. So that's why... If they got upset with the Hidden Colors 1 and 2, it's going to be a lot of hurt feelings with 4. I think, let me see if this is the Whisper. What's up? Is this the Whisper? Oh, BP from New York. Is this the Moist Whisper? What's up, bro? Nah, 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 man. There was someone in the background, man. Uh, who's that in the background whispering to you, bro? Nah, I already moved. I already moved. All right, but who was that, though? Who was that earlier? Nah, that was, like, people in the room, man. There's people in the room whispering to you. Okay. So what's on your I mind? I to another room. All right, well, what's on your mind, brother? All right, what's on my mind? Uh, where do I start with the hidden colors? Do I just start from four or one? Could I just watch, like, four? Um, Four ain't out yet, bro. Hidden colors four ain't out yet. So you got to get um one. Oh, uh, because, you know, I'm from Africa, man. So I don't know how does it relate to me, because I know my history. You do? What part of Africa are you from? Nigeria. Okay, so what do you know about your history? What do I know about my history? Yeah. Everything, my heritage, I know about my history. Our, um, the war, our people, the tribes, all the, all the wars we had before independence. Okay. So, like, the thing is, I don't know how, like, how it relates. Does it relate to specific 
countries in Africa, or is it just I know he's whole... I'm talking. I know he's trolling. I'm just trying to see where he's no, I'm going. No, I'm not trolling. I'm not trolling. I'm just trying to see where you're going with it, because at least be creative with your trolling. So you no, no, I'm not trolling. <laughs> okay, so you're from Nigeria. What part of Nigeria? Are you yeah. From? What part of Nigeria you're from? Um, River State. The, the who? River State. Okay. You had to think about that? That's in the South. Oh, you had to, you had to think about it, huh? <laughs> no, no, I don't think about it. I'm the Igbo. Oh. I can speak it right now. Okay. okay. Speak some Igbo for me. Speak some Igbo. Uh, Kedu. Nigga. That is how you do it in Igbo. Okay, just do a whole sentence in Igbo. My man Ola is Nigerian, so do a whole sentence in Igbo. Let me see. Let me see if Ola. Understand. If you tell me his name, I will tell you where it's from. What um? What tribe? <laughs> Ola said River and Steak. <laughs> Ola, okay, do it. Say a whole sentence in Igbo, not just one word. Ola, Ola, Ola is um. He's a Yoruba. nigga. Would nigga? Will you say a whole sentence in Igbo and 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 not one word? Okay, can I do all the ma? Uh... Get out of here, you damn nigga! Get out of here, nigga! I don't know what that. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, is this you right here? Hold on. So here we are again. Boy, this always happens. It ain't like we're scared, but we know what happens when things move. Too fast, but should be moving slow, and it makes me want you more. narcotic tonight boy <laughs> i know this nigga is doing some moist twerking being a bad influence on that poor little kid what's up who's calling king flex what's up man this is oc in seattle oc what's going on in seattle man i gotta get up there i haven't been to seattle in years what's happening up there bro yeah yeah, yeah you need to get up here man wake up some of these cats man wake your minds up man yes indeed what's on your mind brother hey so you know i got a nephew he's like 14 15 and Man, how can I get the message to these guys, man? My, my younger nieces and nephews, get them to wake up a little bit, man. Well, would you just show them the Hidden Color series, man? Show them that and also show them something that you built. They're going to look at us as examples. See, we talk about waking them up, but we ain't showing them shit. We got to show them I by show example. Them. Well, I, I show them, but they just don't seem interested, man. They're more into, you know, Jordans and when the release dates is coming out and some Jordans or some shoes and clothes and, you know, I try now, to get them to... You know our true history, man. It's just not. Really but easy. but not just not just our history. You got to still show them something that we're building. You got to show them businesses. We got to show them where we own stuff. We got to show them where we are influential. We got to show them, and they kids are smart, man. They know the deal. They know when we're just kind of running our mouths. So we got to really yeah. show them by example, man. That's the bottom line. Thanks for the call, brother. All right, all right. Let me get up out of here. Let me go check on my babies upstairs. And everything. Everybody, go to um, hiddencolorsfilm.com. Also, let me tell y'all something. I'm going to be in Philly. I'm going to be in Philadelphia doing a lecture on July 5th. Let me give y'all the website where you can get information right now. It's called home-together.com. That's the website. Here's the website right here. home dash together.com that's where you can get tickets to join me live in philadelphia july 5th home dash together.com that's the link right there to join me in philadelphia i'm going to be let me let y'all know the venue is going to be let me give y'all the event info. My, my money hands are itching. Hold on. Okay, it's going to be Sunday, July 5th. Doors open between 6 and 7. My lecture is from 7 to 10 at the International House of Philadelphia, 3701 Chestnut Street, Philadelphia. 
Get your tickets now. It's going to be off the chain. It's my first lecture I've done in Philly. I, I don't know why I've never done a lecture in Philly. But home-together.com. So you guys join me in Philly. That's where I'm going to do my lecture, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get out of here. I got some shows to watch. Go to TarikElite.com. Get all that fresh gear. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get all the Hidden Colors DVDs, Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3. Y'all chill out on the bootlegs. Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3 at HiddenColorsFilm.com. And I will holler at you guys on Wednesday's show.